The folks at Blender Foundation have just announced Blender 3.6 the beta. Now what this means is this is the point where you get to download Blender 3.6, test it for bugs, give bug reports and test the cool features that will be shipping with Blender 3.6. So for those who like to get this, all you need to do is go over to blender.org, go all the way down and go over to download Blender. Once this page opens, go all the way down one more time and click on download Blender Experimental. Right here you'd notice that we have Blender 4.0 in alpha at the same time we do have Blender 3.6 in beta. This is currently available for Windows, Mac and Linux. So just in case you like to download this across any of these platforms, right now you can. It is worth mentioning that Blender 3.6 would be an LTS release when this comes out. And so most of the work that is done is more performance driven than new feature oriented. But looking at the new development fund schedule of the second quarter of 2023, things might just switch up a bit, just like we saw with the release of Blender 3.5 during the final release. And before we jump right into it, this video is supported by Madbox Studio. They've just recently announced their brand new motion asset plus food pack, which is a collection of stylized food assets for motion graphics graphic animations, UI designs and more. This currently ships with over 50 plus assets with plans of making over 250 plus food assets in the coming days, which would make it the largest Blender stylized food pack. Currently, this is having a 30% launch offer, which will be running from now till the end of May 2023. And with that said, let's get right into it. And with Blender 3.6, the beta opened right here, you would notice that we have a brand new splash screen. This is courtesy of the folks at Blender Studio as this is the cover art of their most recent Blender Studio animation project. And with that said, if we dive right into Blender 3.6, you would notice that it looks relatively similar to what you have with Blender 3.5. But of course, there's a couple of things that are now available in Blender 3.6 that you would not be able to do with Blender 3.5. The very first one is the tabs now show the name of the tab and there's a tooltip that you find right here. It is now quicker to scroll across the entire tab within the property section to see what tab you're on. This now loads faster compared to what you have with Blender 3.5. At the same time, within the outliner, you can now filter things based off grease pencil object. This is something that wasn't available before, but right now it is available. On the other hand, if you're working with Blender 3.6, if you go over to file, go all the way to where you have open recent. The open recent menu default size has now been increased to 20 items, which means you can now fall back to 20 recently opened items, contrary to what we have with previous versions of Blender. Something else which is pretty cool is when you're searching for notes. So at this point, if you're searching for notes that has slashes, it's now very easy for you to do that. So in this example, if we're trying to find the hue, saturation and value, we can just type in the HSV and we can easily find them. And if you like to continue by simply typing, this automatically shows up. And this will be very useful for shader editors and for those working with geometry nodes. The asset browser is also getting a tiny update. Of course, there's a couple of updates that comes with the asset browser right now. But one of the cool ones which you find out is if you hover across any asset, you now get a tooltip. So this is something that is not available with the previous version of Blender and you can see with what we have here in Blender 3.5 versus what we have here in Blender 3.6 that we do have a tooltip compared to previous version. Another cool update with Blender 3.6 is the 3D text object. So at this point, if you create a 3D text object and you place it within your viewport, you can now select your text by simply dragging your mouse across a selected word and you can easily do more by double clicking. Contrary to Blender 3.5 where you use the arrow keys to navigate across characters and holding down shift to select these, you can now easily use your mouse, click and drag to select your object. There's a much more nicer control and feedback for styles and upper cases and lower cases are now supported for multiple languages. So if you're into creating 3D text, or motion graphics, this is definitely going to be one of those quality of life improvements that you've always asked for. And in terms of animation and rigging, there's a couple of cool updates coming to Blender 3.6. The very first one is slider operators are now available with the hotkey D. At this point, animation sliders can be operated by simply using the hotkey. You can either blend to neighbor, blend to default, breakdown and also ease. And in terms of rigging, you can now grow or shrink your selection when weight painting. So just like you do with your edit mode, where you hold on control and hit the number pad plus button or hit the number pad minus button to either grow or shrink a selection, this feature has now been added as you can use this to paint mask selection. And something which is pretty subtle but yet interesting is at this point if you're playing back an animation in Blender, within the status bar, it is now possible to display the scene duration. The format of this includes the duration time code, the frame, the current frame and the total frame. 
This will be very useful for motion data cleanup artists, supervisors, and generally for those who like to download projects and preview the animation or follow through with them. Alongside these, a couple of improvements and updates come into animation and rigging. These include the frame channels operator, the copy global transform, bone relation lines, context properties, new parent space transforms, which is really good as during animation, the new parent space transform aligns the child object or amateur bones to the parent space. There's a brand new Gaussian smooth operator, which is also going to be very useful for animation cleanup artists. So the idea here is this actually smooths out keyframe data as it improves the overall animation. At this point, this supports modal operation, it is independent of key densities and this smooths in sudden spikes. So if you have an animation where you have like a flickering, this might equate Butterworth from Motion Builder. Finally, there are keyframe updates, a few Python API updates, a dope sheet update and a couple of tweaks. Overall, the animation section for Blender 3.6 is looking pretty. And for modeling, there's a few performance improvements coming to Blender 3.6 and in terms of UV editing, we do have a few features which are pretty interesting to look at. So the performances that we're getting includes conversion from edit meshes to object mode meshes have been parallelized, leading to better performances when exiting edit mode. The face corner split normal calculation performance have been improved by 80% and for subdivision, the subdivision performance is slightly improved for higher meshes with no loose of vectors. And for UV maps, extracting UV map data for viewport drawing is about three times faster. And for UV packing and editing, the UV packing engine has been upgraded, dramatically improving performance on large meshes and an improved support for non-square materials. Other improvements include the UV sphere projection and UV cylinder projection now supports manual placement of seams. And the UV select similar operator now has a new option for similar winding and similar objects. So if you've been thinking about doing your UVs in Blender, then this might be a time for you to start trying that out. And since the very first time we got to see Geometry Node, this tool has actually had more improvements than most part of Blender and it is increasingly growing as Blender is growing to becoming the next procedural tool for everyone. And this brings us to something that is pretty cool that the folks at Blender Foundation have also announced for Blender 3.6, Nodes and Physics. Geometry Node is now shipping with simulation nodes. The Geometry Node now has support for simulations and simulations are created with the simulation input and simulation output nodes. As simulations would become the next wave of things to see in Blender and as we journey through some of the beautiful things that we will be seeing, I believe the community, just like always, will take these basic tools and make them into something very interesting. And for those who like to take a look at the demo file, the demo file is currently available. And if you go over to the link in the description, it's going to bring you right here where you can select the demo file and download it from here. So if this isn't downloading, click on the index of interest and download this Blender file. It is quite impressive to see that we're getting more and more stuff coming to geometry nodes. Performance has actually increased. For example, avoiding copies when converting geometry types can make the instance on point, instance to point, point to vectors, and mesh to point nodes at least 10 times faster. Drawing curve selection data in edit mode is up to 3.8 times faster. And there's a 10% improvement to the mesh to curve node. And of course, the node editor also have a few set of UI improvements. Cycles now ships with two new features, the open shader language, which now supports the new standard micro facet closure from Material X. Byte color attributes are now supported for point clouds and curves. In terms of GPU rendering, there's a few updates that includes Intel hardware ray tracing acceleration using Embry 4, AMD hardware ray tracing acceleration on Windows using HIPRT, AMD GPUs now support Light 3, and Apple Silicon GPUs now support Nano VDB for Metal, reducing memory usage of volumes. And overall, performance in cycles is much more faster as loading times for large meshes is now 4 to 6 times faster, and mesh attributes are copied about 10 times faster. And if you're loading point clouds, this could be 9 times faster, and when you're loading curves, you can get this about 10 times even faster than previous versions of Blender. Currently, there is just one single change which has to do with the improved final handling of glass BDF for better energy preservation and accuracy of results at high roughness. And just like with the beta announcement of Blender 3.5, we are seeing some very interesting stuff when it has to do with EV and the viewport. Currently, there is no update about EV, we are only seeing things that relate to the viewport compositor. The viewport compositor nodes now supports a few more nodes and these are pretty interesting. There is a few things which I think may be coming in the final version of Blender 3.6 which we might not be seeing now. 
Because if we revert to what we did see within the previous announcement from the folks at Blender Foundation, when they talked about the supported project of the second quarter of 2023, you would notice that EVNX was part of the highlighted ones. And if we open up the spreadsheet, you would also notice that EVNX is being dealt with at this time, owing to the fact that Blender 3.6 will be released sometime within July of 2023. And since we're within the second quarter of 2023, and probably we might be seeing EV next in the final release of Blender 3.6. And the same thing might also be for Vulkan, the asset shelf, draft, and also the brush system. And we might potentially be seeing Grease Pencil 3.0 in the final release of Blender 3.6. Of course, currently, if you do take a look at Grease Pencil, there is literally nothing here as much as there's nothing in terms of EV. But I do believe if we go by the current project that I've been worked on and looking at the release schedule for 2023 and 2024, we might be getting all of this that exists between April all the way to mid-July in Blender 3.6. Of course, these are still assumptions, but the folks at Blender Foundation will decide which makes it to final release or not. In terms of pipeline, assets and input outputs, for assets, it is now possible to use relative path when importing assets. There's a new implementation of a C++ based PLY importer and exporter, which is about 4 to 20 times faster for exporting and 8 to 30 times faster for importing. USD is also having updates. So in case you're working with USD, you might actually find this pretty interesting. And these are not the only thing that has to do with IOs that are currently having updates. The FBX is also having an update as well. So just in case you're working with FBX, you definitely notice some improvement in terms of performance. There's a new add-on, which is the 3DS IO. This allows you to import the 3DS files in Blender. At this point, if you do have a file that is a .3DS, you can import and export Blender. Something which is pretty impressive that lots of people would love to work with is the VDB Brush Maker. Previously, we talked about this add-on being available as an add-on which you need to download, but right now, this ships with Blender 3.6 the beta. It's quite impressive to see some of the cool improvements that are now coming to Blender 3.6, but for the most part, some other sections of Blender aren't having as much updates. And this includes the sculpting section, which is literally just having a very few updates. And if we go over to the sequencer, it's also having just two updates at this point. And for those working with the Python API and the text editor, there's a couple of updates and the Blender core also has a couple more updates that you can go through and check out. So this is it. Blender 3.6, the beta is now available for anyone to download and play with. And for those who would like to read more about LTS, you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can read more on that. And if you'd like to download the demo files, Links to this is also going to be in the description as well. In other news, the folks at Blender Foundation are sunsetting some version also known as SVN. At this point, they are rather choosing to work with Git than use SVN, which gives developers and technical writers the following features. The ability to work and make commitments offline, better branching and merging support, better third-party GUI clients, basic online editing in Gitty, and less software to install. So for those who would like to read more about this or catch on with some of the cool add-ons that are now available for this week, links to all of these are going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'd like to see you guys in the next one. Peace.